guys, how's it going? So you probably recognize this spot uh, along with a uh, tent from the, uh, the last time that we was here. Um, and that brings us to the purpose of this whole video. I have left this Light Fighter 1 tent set up here in the mountains for about a month and a half. Now I think we're getting right at about a month and a half. And I wanted to see how it would hold up. I've done this with Night Cat Outdoor Lay Flat Hammock. And I've done two months with the uh, the Haven Tent Lay Flat Hammock. Um, I think I might have done it with another another tent. Uh, obviously the wall tent. I've done it with natural shelter builds uh, and some uh, tarp bushcraft builds. But I, I really want to do it with this one and see how it held up since I had done that just like kind of MacGyver DIY repair to that zipper. We've had very, very heavy rains over the past three days. Um, last night and this morning, um, it's been sunny. This is still a very uh, heavily canopied area, but there's been a constant breeze. So the ground's still pretty wet, uh, but as far as like the vegetation and like the rain flying stuff, it's nice and dried off. But I want to see um, if there's any signs of water or anything that's got in this. You know, we're going to be camping in this tonight, and then I will uh, pack it up and pack it out. But it made for a very nice light uh, hike in. Now, so before we look inside, for anybody that is new, this is what I'm talking about. This whole zipper right here um, was separated. This is a surplus tent, um, and so that was the one thing. This is the, the, the one that I got from uh, Misty Mountain Supply up in Canada. Um, but yeah, this zip was messed up. I took a kit, spent over an hour, hour and a half trying to uh, get, you know, figure out a way to fix this. But the zipper kit that I had, I don't know if this just has some, like, special uh, different type of uh zipper teeth design but it just would not work but the kit uh had these metal it's got like a, it's kind of like a, a staple that you bend in on the inside uh for cloth material um so i stuck it through there just got those placed uh it looks like kind of I, I didn't measure it but roughly six to eight inches apart all the way down it's held it together no problem through some very high winds um, but that section isn't necessarily uh, waterproof, but there is an internal flap to these um, rain flies. So we are going to see what it looks like. Okay, so if we open that, you can just see right here. Um, this is why it's important to have uh, a high bathtub floor on these things. Uh, from the heavy rain we've got, it splashed debris up in under the rain fly all up on our bathtub floor. Um, and uh, why it's nice to have this fine a mesh is because it'll also keep that debris and stuff from getting inside. But let's take and get this open. And some of that right here is going to fall off into the tent where that was on there. Uh, and you can see definitely on that lower end right there, it splashed up against the bathtub floor. But... Uh, that right there, that stain was here when I got it. But I am really, really surprised because it looks like no water got in here whatsoever because coming here just today, like if there was, there would still probably be pooling water. So that internal flap right there that underlaps um, or overlaps, depending on how you look at it, um, the, uh, the zipper there actually work so this tent I've, I've been hesitant to use this tent since i got it and repair it that way like taking it out on certain overnighters because of that fact um that I, I was worried that water would still get in from that way but after the rain we've had i can uh say that that repair definitely and i don't think we'll have anything to uh anything to worry about so um we're gonna go ahead and start getting the rest of camp set up so i'm really really happy about that Yeah, so this chair right here packs up the smallest, uh, even though it's not the lightest, um, out of all the backpacking chairs um, that I have and use. But it was confusing me because one of my legs here lost the as the, the rubber tips come off of it, so I thought I was missing a piece and I was uh, a little bit confuzzled. So we're going to have to make sure that we have a rock or something underneath that because these little rubber feet 
help it a bit from sinking down into the ground, but it's still uh, still not perfect. So I wanted to bring out the OR the uh, the ORC Industries uh, tarp again today because uh, we ain't gonna need it for uh, rain protection or anything, but I would like to have the shade. Plus, you never really do know when a stray summer <coughs> summer storm is gonna roll through. Hey, and since we was checking out a surplus tent, I thought I would bring. This is a new, uh, well, it's a surplus mat. Uh, this one I got. Uh, this one came from GearRack.com. Um, but these are Thermarest uh, inflatable pads. They're self-inflating, but you still got to blow air into them. But this one is in superb condition. So I'm going to go ahead and just open it up and let it be self-inflating. What bit it can. jump started a bit and brought out our nifty rope rollers make set up quick and easy Alrighty, for a sunshade, that'll work perfect, and I made sure to use the elastic pullouts that are already on this tarp for this because uh, there is a chance of some uh, higher winds uh, this season and tonight, and it's definitely been breezy today, so that will just allow this to, you know, move and flex. That's why those are on there.
Alrighty, so tonight we got us a ready wise pasta alfredo with chicken. So we're gonna get some water on for that. Alrighty, it's time to get our bed and stuff situated and hit the hay. So here we got our Zero Foxtrot Woogie. Been using that a lot lately. And then I opted not bring a pillow because in this bag, this is a just a Thermarest bag that I had. I wasn't sure if I would, I would need it at any point because the, uh, the high for today is 80 and the low is uh, 55. But in a lot of these uh, mid hilly sections... It can uh, dip down. It's been dipping down to as low as uh, 50. So uh, this is a, a platoon daddy phenomenal name. But this is a wooby hoodie. And yeah, I don't need it for uh, warmth at all as far as wearing it. Um, so I'm going to take this and my extra large shemag. Like this thing is huge. It's basically a blanket itself. And that right there, if you're curious, a TA camo to camo. Uh, as always, I'll try to remember to link to everything that I use down in the description. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna fold this would be in a certain way and wrap it a certain way and turn it into a, uh, a pillow. I'm gonna try to show you all that. Hey, look at that. We've got a tick crawling on our thing there. So we're gonna put that in the fire been a lot of those this year right, real quick get the wavy out. I don't really have this down to a science I just kind of lay the old shimag out I could fold this up into the hood, but I just fold both the arms over each other. Kind of fold this over in half, stick the hood down into the uh, the base of the shirt, and then fold that in half one time so you kind of get a pillow shape. And then just kind of to tent. God dang it, it's, it's taking. Go to the kind of the mid top of your schmog, fold a little lip over. And then just keep rolling it to the top. And then these two side pieces, I bring them around. Uh, and you can tuck it into itself, but what I like to do is just tie a very loose knot. And then lay it on that as a pillow. That right there is very, very nice. <laughs> and this will be my first night sleeping on this pad. So, I mean, it's definitely... I think it'll be more comfortable than sleeping on just a uh, ISO mat. So here you go. This is what the inside of our tent is looking like. UCO lantern works great up in that mesh pocket. You could also just stick your headlamp up there. Um, but you know, having a secondary light just reserves battery. Um, but yeah, in case oh, there's my headlamp. Oh, I need to put it in this mesh pocket. Um, yeah, you got plenty of room on the inside if you need to put your uh, like if I need to put my backpack in here or something. Um, if it was a hard rain, you didn't want all that debris sprot <coughs> that splashed up like on the bathtub for this on your pack then uh 
there's plenty of room for it. Uh, even if you just slept to one side, um, you could have a whole like line of gear up beside you. But that's going to do it for now. And uh, I will talk to you guys in the morning. Good morning guys, how's it going? Uh, it's just now past, uh, just has past 6 o'clock in the morning. It is a very nice, uh, cool morning, very calm, very still. Um, and yeah, so I like, went to bed last night at 11, just woke up like right here around 6, uh, just out of the blue, so I'm going to go ahead and try to get things going, but um, yeah, I was really, I was really pleased with how this uh, military surplus thermarest mat did. Um, I knew that the pillow combo would be fine. I probably either slept on my back or on my stomach. And yeah, just a uh, inside look. So uh, yeah, this is that thermarest surplus mat I got from uh, Gear Rack. It uh, like you know, it's surplus. Like that's what all these stains and stuff are. Um, but it really uh, like kind of. Not ref I don't know if reflect it insulated very well. Like it insulated my body heat. I, it was really noticeable when I was laying on my stomach because uh, with this you know low profile uh, pillow set up with that wibby hoodie and the shemag, um, it was really comfortable laying um, on my stomach. And yeah, I'd say uh, based off what the weather said and uh, the feel of things, it got down to probably about fifty four. Um, and you know, just like wearing just my shirt and stuff that I had with me. Uh, and then the uh, the wooby, I was super super comfortable, and I mean it was really uh, I mean it felt nice. Uh, that temperature range just is a godsend when it's in the 80s and 70s and stuff during the day. Overall, really impressed with uh, how this tent held up, um, and I look forward to using it um, on future outings. The next thing we need to do is get that ultralight, uh, near zero tent out into a thunderstorm, and there should be one coming within the next, uh, couple of days, so as far as overnighters go, that might be the next thing you guys see. Included, we're gonna wrap it up here so I can get out and get stuff packed up, but, um, as always, thanks for watching. Please make sure you hit the thumbs up button. That makes a big difference with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you have not already. Share the channel, your friends, family, anybody that enjoys outdoor activities, uh, gear, field reviews, stuff like that. Um, and then uh, definitely hit me up in that comment section, thoughts, opinions, questions, uh, anything you guys like gear-wise you want to see me uh, cover or touch on, whether it be surplus, brand new gear, ultralight gear, uh, outdoor tech, just really anything i think i think that's everything so uh until the next one guys adios